All right then, we are going to do the top 100 most played green cards in Commander according to EDH Rec, ranked on a tier list. So, before we start, I'm going to go ahead and just explain the green criteria. I'm only going off a of power level here. I'm not basing this on budget or and we're not going to be looking at things based on whether or not it's something you should be doing, like if it's too mean or anything. This is just purely an only power level. Secondly, uh, we need to explain what the different tiers mean. This is that's not what I wanted to do. Please go back. All right. So S tier are staples. A tier are cards that go in lots of decks and are very important in certain decks. B tier are cards that are okay and play, you play rarely. C cards are cards you should almost never play. D tiers are cards you should not play. And F tier are cards that are laughably bad. Starting off, we're going to put crop rotation in A tier. You kind of need a specific lance you want to find with this. It depends on what colors you're in, but there are definitely colors that really want to go find specific lands. And this is a really efficient way to do that. One mana stack of land, go find any other land and put it directly into play is really efficient. Doubling Season, also A tier, not S tier. It's kind of a combo card, basically. You play this and you slam a Planeswalker, and then you ultimate the Planeswalker immediately and do a ton of stuff. Exploration, also just A tier, not S tier. I think you have to build around this. Most decks don't actually want this, I don't think. I don't think most green decks actually want this card because you need to have tons of lands to keep playing and playing off of it, and most decks aren't going to actually be able to do that. So I think other ramp options are usually better than this unless you're, you know, building a lands deck. Next up is Fertile Ground. Making sure I know which one this is. Two mana enchant land, whenever it's tapped, tapped additional mana of any one color. Yeah, this is like S tier. There are going to be a lot of these cards. Any two mana ramp spell is going to be an S tier, but you aren't going to be playing all of them. This is for certain packages, but I think this is as good as like a... What is it? Uh, a land-based ramp effect for green a lot of the time. Having this at two mana, you can use it the turn it comes down on like a lot of other man-based ramp. It is an enchantment that can get blown up, but it's, that's not going to happen very often. So I think this is S tier. Greater good, also S tier. This is good in any green deck that is going to play large creatures, and most green decks are. It's a four-man enchantment that allows you to sacrifice a creature. You draw cards equal to its power and then discard three cards. As long as you have at least a creature with power three or yeah, at least power three whenever you sack something to this, it's going to be worth activating. Sometimes even sacrificing a power two or power one creature to this is fine if there are cards you really want in your hand that you want in your graveyard. Can this transformation also S tier? Mostly just because we're mono green and we don't have much creature removal, but this is a two mana aura. It makes something into a 3 3 with no abilities and it draws a card whenever you, it enters the battlefield. Extremely good for green. It helps deal with commanders permanently and a 3 3 isn't that big of a deal to you because you're green. Nature's Lore, another two mana ramp spell, only finds forests, but it, it's incredibly good. Utopia Sprawl, one mana ramp spell. All of the one mana ramp spells are going to be in S tier, by the way. I'm going to put. Lenore Elves and Elvish Mystic up here as well. And if I see any more, I'm going to go ahead and throw them up here real quick. People should be playing more of these cards. They're insane. Any of these one mana ramp spells in green, you should have at least some Elvish Mystics or some Utopia Sprawls. Yeah, sure, they can get removed, but they probably aren't going to. And being able to ramp on turn one into a three drop on turn two is incredibly powerful. Zendikar Resurgent. Like B tier, honestly. It's really not that strong. This is a 7 mana mana doubler that also lets you draw a spell or draw a card whenever you cast a creature spell. It can help you like close out games, but I generally find that it doesn't actually accomplish all that much when I end up playing it, especially because it's 7 mana. That's so much to pay for its effect. Like, you don't have to play this, and it's probably just going to get removed by the time it comes up, uh, back to you. Like, this probably will like win you the game the next turn, but I feel like for 7 mana, it's often worth playing like a card, one of Green's Haymakers that are actually probably going to help you in the game rather than something that will likely let you win the game if you want to tap with it, but isn't necessarily guaranteed. Explosive Vegetation, like B tier. If you really, really want tons of lands in play, these type of effects are good, but I find they're generally not that great, and I don't, don't want more than like one or maybe two in my deck. This is a 4 mana Rampant Growth that finds two basics instead of one. Still pretty good. Elemental Bond. Like, high B tier. The three-man enchantment, whenever a creature with power through a greater ETB is under your control, you draw a card. 
it's fine. This can help you cycle cards. There are cards that are better at helping you draw cards over casting creatures, and in green specifically. And I think that this one has too many restrictions for it to be good. Wilderness and Reclamation, like high A tier. This is almost S tier, but I feel like there are tons of decks that don't want it is the problem. At your instep, you want to tap all of your lands, which is an insane ramp. If you are in something like, I don't know, some sorts of spell slinger deck. If you're in blue green, you're going to want this uh, more likely than not. It's a really strong card. This can give you tons of mana. Like, for, if you have an instant in your hand, you can tap all your mana while this is triggers on the stack. Then untap it, tap all your mana again, cast a spell. Do something like that. Terracidon, B tier as well. It's fine. It's an 8 mana 9-9 nine, nine. when it ETBs you destroy up to 3 target non-creature permanents your opponent's control. They each make a 3-3 three, three beast. This doesn't actually close games and you want your 8 mana spells to actually close games. It's a fine removal spell but like sure you can cheat this into play and blow a bunch of stuff but why not just play a real removal spell instead of doing something dumb like that. Worldly Tutor S tier. It's a good tutor. This is only find... I'm trying to see if this finds more than just creatures. If I, yeah, only finds creatures. That's fine, though. One mana instant to tutor up any creature in your deck, especially in green, is going to be extremely good. You're probably going to have creatures that do a lot for you, no matter what, and finding the right one at the right time is worth it. Another ramp spell. Ram and up Excavator. Also an S tier. Probably, like, low S tier. This lets you play land cards from your graveyard, which is insane. You should probably be running fetch lands in your deck no matter what, even if you're mono green, if you have cards like this, just because it makes it, makes it so that you always have a land to draw. This might be, like, high A tier or something, but, like, maybe it belongs at high A tier with, like, Exploration. But if you're in a lands-based deck with, like, a lands package, these cards are insane. You just have to actually be built around it. I, I think Exploration is worth playing if you have cards like Ram and have Excavated in your deck. Otherwise, it's kind of bad. But these cards play so well together. They're, like, almost a combo. Green Sun's Dance is S tier. This a, it lets you play any creature, green creature card from your deck for one mana more, basically, which is insane. Nature's Claim. One green mana, instant destroys target artifact or enchantment. It, they gain four life, but you don't care because it's a commander and four life means nothing. A one mana naturalize is insane. This is like the naturalized version of Source of Plowshares, essentially. Oracle of Moldiah, also S tier. This is really good for like any. At CDH tables, I think it loses some value because games aren't going to go quite long enough for it to matter. But if you're in any table where players are going to be winning by turn 6 rather than like turn 4, I think this card is insane. It's going to give you a ton of value and draw you a bunch of cards and do a ton of stuff. Beast Whisperer. I think this is quite a bit better than Elemental Bomb. Paying 1 green mana more so that I draw for all my creature spells rather than only creatures with power 3 or greater is really worth it. Spring... Bloom Druid. High B tier. It's a 3 mana dude. When it ETBs, you sacrifice the land, then go find two basic lands and put them on the battlefield tapped. It's good in like landfall decks. Realm Walker. High B tier. This lets you, when it ETBs, you choose a creature type and you may look at the top card of your library and cast spells of the chosen creature type. It's pretty good. Veil vale Summer S tier. This is basically green pyroblast, except it's even better when it actually works. It also draws you a card, which is insane. It can't destroy permanents, but that's fine. You mostly use pyroblast as a counter spell anyway, so th this card's very good. One green mana to give all your stuff hexproof from blue and black, make your spells uncounterable and draw a card is super strong. Regrowth, A tier. It's a good effect. Eternal Witness, also just A tier. This is actually worse than Regrowth in most decks. People don't believe me when I say that, but it's it's fucking true. If you're running Eternal Witness and you aren't blinking it or reanimating it or doing anything with it outside of just playing it as a three mana body, it's not much better than Regrowth. The mana efficiency is more important in Commander than a 2-1 body that isn't going to do anything. Avenger of Zendikar, high B tier. It's very slow. There are lots of ways to make this extremely powerful, though. It's a 7 mana 5 5. You make a 0 1 plan when it ETBs for each land you control. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each plant you control. So this can put out a lot of damage really fast. But the great thing about it, really, is just that it makes a ton of bodies as soon as it comes into play. If you're in red and you have stuff like Perforos, this is often just going to kill a table. If you're in black and you have Aristocrats out, this is often just going to kill a table. That's really what it's used for, to be a 7-mana thing that makes, like, t 11 bodies when it comes down. And if you're in white, you have, like, go-white shenanigans. The tokens become much, much, much stronger. 
So it's, I feel like in mono green, it's actually not very good, but once you add in other colors, you can make it much, much better than it is in mono green. I'm gonna pause this. Champion of Lamholt, A tier. If you're in a really attacky deck that like like is good at spamming creatures, this is a really, really strong card, but I don't think it's quite generic enough to be S tier. It, creatures with power less than it can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature ETBs under your control, put a 1-1 counter on it. This is often just going to make it so that your opponents can't block any of your stuff. Cultivate, also A tier. This is not quite S tier because 3 mana ramp is a lot, lot worse than 2 mana ramp. But this is like, I think the only acceptable 3 mana ramp that only ramps you for 1 in the entire format. Rampart Grove is S tier. Let me just go ahead and grab all this stuff. I'm looking for... Farseek is also another 2 mana ramp effect. You're not going to be wanting running all of these, but they just all go up there because they're what green is built off, basically. Where is Kodama's Reach? I believe it was on this list. There it is. Kodama's Reach is also going to be in A tier alongside Cultivate. They're the same card. One just has an extra type on it for no reason. Evolution Stage. Like, high B tier. It's really good in, like... Decks that care about proliferating. Landfall pro proliferate is a pretty strong effect, but it's so niche. There are very few decks that actually want this. Next up is Garrick's Uprising. This is actually A tier. I think in a lot of decks, this is actually better than... Where is the dude? Beast Whisperer. And quite a bit better than Elemental Bond as well. When it ETBs, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you draw a card. Creature you control of Trample, and whenever a creature with power 4 or greater is about when you control, you draw a card. It's more restrictive than Elemental Bond, but it cycles when it comes down, and it gives your dude Trample, which is huge. Like, you're probably going to be able to give your dude Trample anyway, but having it on a three, like, having it on your sort of draw engine is really, really nice. Harmonize, like, high A tier. It, this is a card that green wants to play a lot just because having a draw effect that your opponents can't interact with is really strong. But the thing is, green can often run enough cards like Garrick's Uprising, like Elemental Bond or Beast Whisper or whatever else that your opponents aren't going to have enough removal for all of your like try and stick it and draw effects. So sometimes Harmonize just gets beat out by playing a, enough card advantage engines such that one of them sticks eventually. But 4 mana draw 3 is worth it a lot of the time. I think a lot of decks still want it. Rishkar's Expertise, A as well. This is a lot worse, but this is one of the better versions of Green's like draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control effect. Because it lets you cast a 5 mana or less spell for, from your hand for free when it resolves. Which is really nice. It allows you to refill your hand as well as develop your board at the same time, which is really, really helpful. It's probably better than Harmonize, actually. <laughs> In most decks, but it is pretty niche. You have to be in a big creatures deck. And not all green decks want to be playing big creatures. Scavenging Ooze, like high B tier. It's a graveyard hate effect. It's a pretty weak one, but it's tutorable. It gets counters, it gains life. If you like if you're in green and you want to be doing stuff with your graveyard, but you still need graveyard hate, scavenging ooze is a good way to go because you might not want to run stuff like Relic of Progenitus, which also hits your graveyard. So, Scavenging Goose still has use. It's just pretty niche. Teamer Sabretooth. Like, high B tier. It's good in, like, infinite mana combos and for bouncy shenanigans, but a lot of the time, I feel like it's not worth it in most green decks. I just think it has its place, but not every green deck wants it. Not even close to every green deck wants it. It's a 4 mana 4 3. You can pay 1 in a green to bounce a creature to your hand, and it gains indestructible. Next is what else? It's also B tier. It's a 3 mana. Elf, when it ETBs, you find a forest and put it onto the battlefield. I believe it's just a forest. I don't think it has any other restrictions. Yep. So, it gets you an untapped land when it ETBs, but 3 mana ramp has to be really, really good to see play. I don't think this is as good as Kodama's Reach or Cultivate in most green decks. But if you're an Elves, this is a pretty good ramp effect. If you're messing with... Uh, enter the battlefield triggers. This is a pretty good ramp effect, etc. Livecrafter's Bestiary. This is one of the only bad green cards we have on this list so far. I don't think this card is worth it very often at all. During your upkeep, you scry one. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you can pay a green to draw a card. First off, this is way more work than Elemental Bond. 
And what do you get off of it? A scry? That's not really worth it. And, like, this is basically a slightly better version of Minter of the Meek, but Green doesn't have to play cards like Minter of the Meek for draw. They can, like, play Literal Harmonize, which is much better than this. I just don't think this should basically ever be run in a green deck. Acidic Slime, B tier. If you're in Blink decks or you're in Reanimator decks, it's okay, but I don't think you should play it anywhere else. It's a 5-mana 2-2 with Death Touch. When ETBs, you destroy target artifact, enchantment, or land. Having land destruction on a blinkable body is pretty nice, but you're not really going to be trying to strip mine your opponents out of the game, at least not with Acidic Slime, very often. So it's better at just, like... Better just as a value play, and having a 2-2 with Death Touch to come up the board can be nice sometimes, but I don't think you ever want to cast this for 5 mana from your hand, unless you have more shenanigans with it. Noxious Revival, like B tier. This is basically a combo card. It's really bad in green, actually. I think this is only good in, like, teamer or stuff, where you're trying to go off and storm off, and this is a way to recover. So basically, this is a... It costs one Phyrexian Crane, so it costs two life, essentially, unless you put a card from your graveyard on top of your deck so that you can draw it again. So if you're trying to go off on combo turn, you can, like, cast Windfall, Noxious Revival, put Windfall back on top, then cast a draw spell, Windfall again, and, like, go through and do a ton of stuff. Cryptolith right, like, low B tier. I don't think most green decks want this. There are other decks that aren't mono green that do want this a lot, though. I think a lot of green deck wants, green white decks want this a lot. Because anything with, like, token spam, this is really good in. Tireless Tracker. Like, low A tier, high B tier, I think. This is a pretty alright draw engine. It's obviously pretty okay in landfall decks. It's one of the better ways to draw lots of cards. It's also a body. It's just, it's really removable and it's kind of slow. You often have better ways of, like... A lot of the time, I'd rather cast a Harmonize than a Tireless Tracker. But, like, you can get this on turn two after a Lenore Elves on turn one, right? And then, like, start stacking up clues and drawing them later in the game this is something that a lot of green decks are going to want to run but you kind of have to not have that many other better draw options i think next blamation i think this card's actually pretty bad this doesn't help you win games it only helps you do cool stuff that you probably could have done anyway this is a seven mana five five with trample that triples all the mana that your lands produce now tripling mana is a fun sounding effect but like when is this better than Zendikar Resurgent? Can someone please explain? Like, when is tripling your mana going to allow you to do something that doubling your mana wouldn't do? Especially when you aren't drawing extra cards off of your spells. I think Zendikar Resurgent's ability to draw you cards is way better than the the mm, extra mana Nyx Bloom Agent is going to give you. I've seen so many people play Nyx Bloom Agent, like, cast all the stuff out of their hand and then not actually win the game afterward because it, it wasn't enough. It didn't actually help them win. And I feel like... That might just be people playing the wrong top end, but like you could be the top end, you can just replace an exclamation with, and it will often be better. And I think Zendikar Resurgent, even if you're trying to do like something absurd and you're not actually playing a, a real combo, Zendikar Resurgent's ability to refill your hand is still better. Search for tomorrow, like B tier, it's a three mana ramp effect, but you can suspend it for two turns for one green mana, which is sometimes good on like turn one. But this is kind of just a worse version of a lot of these other. Ramp effects. Finale of Devastation, like A tier. This is basically a bad worldly tutor. This, or a bad, where is it? Green Sun Zenith. This lets you find a creature from your graveyard or deck that costs X or less. It costs X double green. And then if you paid 10 or more, all your creatures get plus 10, plus 10, and I think maybe haste until end of turn. Yes, they do gain haste if you pay 10 or more mana. So basically, this is just a way to end games, late game, if you have like 12 mana or tutor up specific creatures. The problem is, realistically, if you want to just end the game really easily, you can just tutor for a combo piece off of Green Sun Zenith, and that'll be better a lot of the time, or just tutor with a combo piece off of your Wardly Tutor. But this is another uh, tutor for creatures, which I, you're never going to pass up a tutor, basically, if you're trying to play a creature based tutor deck. Or a, a creature-based combo deck, and you need tutors for it. And this one is also has the ability to push through for lots of damage, which is always nice. So, definitely not bad. Growing Rights of Itlamok. High B tier. It's too niche to be an A tier, but I think it's really strong. This is a 3-mana enchantment when ETBs. You look at the top 4 cards of your deck and add a creature to your hand. And then, at the end of your turn, I believe... 
Yeah, at the end of your turn, if you have four more creatures, it transforms into a Gaia's Cradle. So you can tap it for one green for each creature you control. This is a really good card in, like, go-wide decks. But you have to be in a go-wide deck that also plays enough creatures to hit something off of its ETB. I don't think playing this and hoping to flip it by having four creatures out is often worth it. Because, like, it's easy to blow up and stuff. But if you're good at triggering the thing and you feel like you can hit stuff off of its trigger, this is going to be worth it a lot of the time. Balagad Recovery, literally S tier. This is a regrowth for one more mana that's also a land on the back side. And that being a land makes it S tier. Pretty much every green deck should want this. Unless you just can't afford it in your mana base, this is always worth it. Roiling Regrowth, like low B tier. It's fine in a landfall deck, but it's not even the best version of this effect. Rancor, also B tier. If you want auras, this is an aura that comes back to your hand when it would uh, go from the field to the graveyard, so that's fine. Plus two, plus zero, and trample for one green mana is also a fair cost. I think this card's fine. Soul of the Harvest, very low B tier. This is way too much mana to pay for this. I'm going to put this in high C tier, actually. Like, you can play this, but it's usually just worse than Elemental Bond or... Beast Whisperer, or whatever else. Being a 6-6 six, six with Trample just doesn't actually matter. And the draw card effect, you can get other places for cheaper. So, Fertilid, like, C tier. I don't know why people play this card. This is a 3-mana, zero, 0-0. Zero. It enters the battlefield with a couple of 1-1 one, one counters on it. Did I spell it wrong? Yes, I did. You can play one in a green and remove one counter from it, and target player does a rampant growth. So for five mana, you can get... No, sorry. Seven mana, you can get two rampant growth. First off, like, Burnished Heart is literally just better than this. It's a three mana, two, two, and you can pay three mana later. All generic mana, by the way, no colors. And find two basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tap. So it's just this effect, but for one less mana. And, the, like... Sure, with 1-1 one, one counter shenanigans, you can ramp more off of it, but, like, is that really what you want to do with your, like, weird 1-1 one, one counter shenanigans? Like, just, just like, play freaking what's the card? Walking Ballista and actually kill your opponents if you can do something crazy with 1-1 one, one counters. I don't think being able to get a bunch of lands out of your deck very slowly makes this worth it. I'd rather even just play Explosive Vegetation than a card like this. Explosive Vegetation is much better than this. For four mana, you, you get as much ramp as this gets you for seven. Uh, and, like, sure, paying it in installments is a, a real thing. I understand that. But, like, I, I just don't think it's ever worth it, dude. That's so much mana to pay. Like, you can go turn three, play this, turn four, activate twice. And then, but, like, then you've just, you used your, like, Sure, in that instance, you would have ramped for two and have two extra mana on turn five. But on the turn where you activate this twice, you could literally just cast Explosive Vegetation and get the same amount of mana of lands out and not have spit three mana on, on the previous turn for this. I never understand when this is a good card. Burgeoning. It's like A tier. It's good in the decks that Exploration is good in, but it's less good because you have to rely off of your opponents. Being able to trigger landfall and stuff on your own turn is part of what makes Exploration good. It's also niche, just like Exploration is. Second Harvest. Low B tier. This is four mana, and it makes for each token you control, you make another token. That's an exact copy of it. If you're in token decks, it's okay, but this isn't even, like, a very good card for token decks, honestly. It's pretty low B tier. This might just be high C tier, actually. I don't think even in token decks you want this. I think there are better versions. Or in Frostfang. A tier. Really strong, really, really great card draw engine. Attacking creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Five mana, two, six. It's a snow creature as well. This is basically just a slightly better coastal piracy, but green makes better use of coastal piracy than blue does. So it's a really strong effect. Force of Vigor, S tier. This is a naturalized that hits two things that you can cast during your opponent's turn for free by exiling a green card from your hand. Super good. Free spells are all, are always good, and this one gets two things, you know, 
removing stuff rather than countering spells is worse for a free spell, but this is still on enough, and it's worth it enough of the time. And honestly, paying this for four mana isn't even bad. I wouldn't put this up here if it didn't have the alternate cost, but like being so flexible, being a two for one sometimes, and a zero mana, like stopgap that stops you from losing the game other times is good enough that i think it goes all the way up here reckless provisioner like b tier it's good in landfall decks i think it's kind of bad everywhere else it's a three mana like three two i think with landfall make a treasure which is like fine it's not it's not reckless it's tireless Oh, sorry. It makes a food or a treasure token. But you're going to make a treasure because that's much better. I I mean, getting... This is basically just a uh, a one-mana more expensive Lotus Cobra. And Lotus Cobra is fine, but it's niche enough that I don't think it goes above B tier. Inspiring Call, B tier. Three-mana instant draw a card for each creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it. And those creatures get indestructible in the turn. It's really good on 1-1 counter decks that like to go wide, but pretty niche. Same thing with Incubation Druid. This is a 2-mana, 0-2. You can tap it out of 1-mana of any color a land you control could produce, I believe. Yes, of a land that a land you control you could produce. If it has a 1-1 counter on it, you may add 3-mana of that color instead. You pay 5-mana to put 3-1-1 counters on it. You only do that once. It's good in 1-1 counter decks that are able to put 1-1 counters on it pretty easily or that care about it having 1-1 counters. Outside of that, it's pretty bad. It's kind of just a more easily removed rampant growth outside of that triumph of the hordes a tier four mana crazy control get plus one plus one trample and infect this will end the games really easily this is one of the cheapest ways this is basically a second crater hope behemoth that's harder to cheat out but it's cheaper so it's pretty strong corsair crucifix like b tier this is good in like landfall decks and nothing else i think people overplay this card this is not a replacement for oracle of Moldaya. it's not even close like, sure, drawing cards off your deck when they're land sometimes can be strong, but, like, it doesn't do enough for three mana. It doesn't ramp you. The cards it draws you aren't real cards you're actually drawing. It's just not quite good enough. Overwhelming Stampede. Really dumb card. This is basically a one more mana for another Triumph of the Hordes. Five mana until in a turn, Christian Control get gain trample and get plus x plus x was at where x is the greatest power among creatures you control if you have a big creature and a few creatures out this will at least kill somebody if not in the game it's a pretty good effect for five mana priest of detania high b tier it's good in elf decks two mana one one tap add a green for each elf you control it's good in elves Eldritch Evolution, A tier. This is a three mana enchantment. As an additional cost to play it, you have to sacrifice a creature. You find a creature with a mana value equal to the sacrificed creature's mana value plus two or less. You put it onto the battlefield and you exile Eldritch Evolution. It's a good tutor. It lets you trade one creature for a, a, a different creature that's usually better. Even trading like a two drop for a one drop can be good sometimes if the one drop is what you need. There's another creature tutor. It's really strong. These creature tutors are really great. Parallel Lives, like B tier. This, whenever you make a token, it makes another token. Of the exact same copy of it. This is worse than Anointed Procession in green than Anointed Procession is in white, specifically because green cares less about tokens than white does, so it has less use. But it's still strong for the decks that want it. Totski. This is basically just a one mana cheaper ore and frost thing that's indestructible. It doesn't give your attackers death touch. It's cheaper, so it's better, but Orin Frostfang is more powerful once it actually comes down. This is also indestructible for some fucking reason, and can't be countered for some other fucking reason. This card's stupid. Both these cards are really good, but this one, really, it's just way too good. I, I don't know why it's so hard to remove. Migration Path, this is basically a cyclable version of... What is it? Explosive Vegetation, they're okay. You'll want, like, one of these in your decks. Migration Path is one of the better ones. Court of Calling. This is also S tier. It's X, green, 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 Convoke, so you can tap your creatures to help pay for, which is what makes it really good. And you search your library for a creature card with CMC X, put onto the battlefield. X or less, I believe. Put onto the battlefield. This is another creature toter. Any, like, any creature-based combo deck is going to want this, even ones that are 
aren't quite that creature based can also make use of this because it's pretty flexible. I think this is quite a bit better than Finale Devastation because A, instant speed, and B, Convoke makes it a lot easier to cast. Costing one more mana up front, like, Convoke makes up for that by quite a bit. So, Bloom Tinder, S tier card. This is basically a two mana card that often ramps for like two, three, four, five mana, which is just insane. This is better than a lot of the, like, rampant growths and stuff that are up here. I think this should be an all, like, unless you're in mono green, I think you should probably be playing this in a green deck. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Low S tier. You kind of have to be in the right deck for it, but this just, like, ends games so easily. And it's also easier to cheat out than all the other versions of this effect. Overwhelming Stampede, Triumph of the Hordes, are sorceries. Green can't find sorceries easily. It can't cheat them into play. You can, like, Court of Calling for this and make your board super big. You can... Finale of Devastation for this. You can go ahead and greet some Zenith for this. Just put it directly into play. Kill your opponent. Incredibly good card. It's like a 8 mana 5 fire or something with haste. When ETP is creatures you control to plus X plus X and gain trample. Where X is the number of creatures you control. Which will just make your board huge. Farhaven Elf. It's a Wood Elves. It's okay. Azusa Lost But Seeking. It's good in landfall decks and decks that are good at getting lots of lands. Kind of bad and everything else, though. Kind of goes along with Exploration, Ramanov Excavator, etc. The, these cards are insane together, but you kind of have to have the right cards. Beastmaster's Ascension, low A tier. Three mana enchantment. Whenever a creature controls attacks, you put an Ascension counter on it, or some type of counter. When you have five or more counters on it, creature you can get plus five, plus five, and have Trample. This is basically a slightly harder version of Creative Behemoth to get to work. It's... I think worse than Triumph of the Hordes and Overwhelming Stampede, but it's basically another version of those cards. So, it can't be that bad, honestly. You can usually just play this when you already have five creatures out. Go ahead and swing. You put the five counters on it. They get plus five, plus five, and I have Trample now. Kill someone slash in the game. Explore. Two mana, draw a card. You play additional land this turn. It's okay. It's an alright ramp spell. It's a lot worse than Rampant Growth. Destiny Spinner. Like, low A tier. This makes creatures and enchantments you control uncounterable, which is really good. So, it's at least A tier. I believe... No, it can't be countered itself. Carpet of Flowers. Secret S tier. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, I believe. As, at each of your main phases, both of them. Wow, that's fucking stupid. If you haven't add, oh, if you haven't added mana with this ability this turn, you add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of islands target opponent controls. This is good for the same reason that Pyroblast is good, because someone's probably going to be playing blue, because blue is one of the best colors, and this is a one mana thing that goes off if you have a blue opponent. This is often going to make like three or so mana for you every single turn. And even if it makes one mana for you, it's worth it. So, Wild Growth. Another S-tier card. You don't want all of these S-tier ramp spells in your deck, but you're going to be playing some of them no matter what. So they're all S-tier. And they're all fucking insane. Rampaging Battle Loss. It's like B-tier. It's good in a landfall deck. I don't think running this in anything but a landfall deck is ever worth it. It's a six mana sixth. Trampler, Landfall, when it, a land ETB is under your control, you make a 4-4 Beast. The Great Hinge. Low S tier, you kind of have to be in a creature deck, but it's fucking insane. It costs like 7 green green. It costs X less, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. You can tap it to get 2 green mana and gain 2 life, or 3 life, I think it's 2 life. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you put a woman counter on it and draw a card. Non-token creature. I want to make sure. So yeah, this is basically a... What is it? This is basically like everything that... Where is the card I'm looking for? Everything that Zendikar Resurgent wished it could be. It's a card that is a card advantage engine that also gets you mana. But unlike Zendikar Resurgent, which you have to tap out for and hope survives, you can often play this for like four mana and tap it immediately and play another card and draw, draw a card off of it. It's fucking insane in any very heavily creature-based green deck, which most green decks are, but not literally all of them are. Return to Nature... Like, 
top of A tier, almost S tier card. It's a two mana. You destroy an artifact or enchantment or you exile card from our graveyard. One of the better naturalized effects in green. The ability to exile card from your graveyard comes off sometimes, and it's nice to have on there. Scoot Swarm, low A tier. Really good in like tokeny decks or in landfall decks. I don't think it's quite worth running anywhere else. It's 3 mana 1-1. One, one. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, depending on how many lands you have, you get a 1-1 one, one token. That is an insect. But if you control 6 or more lands, you get another copy of Scoot Swarm. So this like, if you have 6 lands, you play a land. You get this, you play another one, you get two more because the other, the one that's a copy of it also makes a copy. You play another one, you get four more. It, it goes off really easily. This can kill entire tables really fast, but people usually just remove it. You kind of have to either like hold it off or sometimes you can just run it out just to bait out removal, which is fine. Shamanic Revelation, high B tier, maybe low A tier. Five mana draw card for each creature you control, and then you gain life for each creature you control with power four or greater. It's a five mana draw a bunch of cards. It's pretty good. It's kind of worse than like these cards, which can like Orin Frostfang and Totsky, which can draw you a similar number of cards but stay around. Generally, these will draw you enough cards to turn to come down that it's worth uh, risking it. But like the thing is, like this requires so much more setup. I would rather play Harmonize a lot of the time just because I know I'm getting my cards rather than having to hope that no one wipes my board the turn before I tried to cast it. This is like, this is as finicky as these cards, but has a lower ceiling, is the problem. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. It's another version of Exploration that makes your lands even better, so it can't be bad. Lotus Cobra. It's a slightly cheaper version of whatchamacallit, but it doesn't make treasures. Tireless Provisioner. These guys go ne neck and neck. These are essentially the same card, but one, like, there's a little different. Uh, both very good in the right decks. Arbor Elf, like, A tier. I think this is only playable in, like, mono green, basically, because in most other, or maybe in two colors even, but in, like, three colors that up, you just can't play because you're not going to have forest untapped. But it's a really strong card. I just think there are better one mana, mana dorks in green. Return of the Wild Speaker, like B tier. This is a okay draw spell for green. You draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, and non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three. You have to choose one of those. This is often good. It's just a bit finicky having it do non-human, and the overrun effect isn't that good. It's Often very good, but sometimes there are just better draw spells in your deck. And sometimes you're playing humans, which makes this really suck. Sky Shroud Claim. It's alright. It's another Veggie's effect. Crows and Grip. High A tier. All, all, I'm almost just not saying S tier because 3 mana is a lot for a naturalized effect. But it's a naturalized effect with split second, which means that players can't activate abilities except for mana abilities or cast spells while it's on the stack. Which is really, really, really good because it basically just means as soon as you cast this, whatever you're targeting just dies. Counter spells be damned. Any protection spells be ba be damned. It's just gonna work. Seedborn Muse, high A tier. People play this in literally all their decks, guys. It's not that fucking good. You have to actually be able to use the mana for this card to be good. If you can't use the mana, this card doesn't do anything. I think you have to be kind of built around it, but there are lots of decks that can actually make use of that. You just can't play it in like literally everything like a lot of people do. I think it's a slightly overplayed card. This is just a one mana mana dork. It's good. Guardian Project. Yeah, it's pretty good. It goes up here with Beast Whisper. This is basically an enchantment version of Beast Whisper. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if there are no creatures on the battlefield that should share a name with it, or no creatures in graveyard that share a name with it, you draw a card. We're in a singleton format, so that'll basically never happen. So this is pretty much always going to draw you a card. Harrow. It's good in the landfall decks. It goes right next to Roiling, whatever. Yeah. Roiling Regrowth. Right here. They're being, it's being really rude to me right now. These cards are essentially the same, but one's an instant and better. Heroic Intervention. 
like low S tier. Some decks don't want this because they don't have stuff to protect, but any deck that has stuff to protect probably wants this card. This card's insane. Two mana, all permanents you control, getting Hexproof and Indestructible makes it really, really, really hard to do anything. You can often like use this to like like cast this and just attack with all your creatures to make it so that combat pretty much has to go your way no matter what. Like even just attack, well, you probably just attack with your creatures and hold this up. So after blocks, you cast this. But there, this is uh, a card that will save you a lot of the time. It's one of the reasons why cards like Toxic Deluge are so much better than cards like Blasphemous Act. Getting around Indestructible is really important. Sylvan Library also S tier. This is one of the like only real S tier draw spells Green has. It's a two mana enchantment during your draw step. You draw two additional cards, and if you do, you have to either pay for life or put. One of the one of the three cards you've drawn this turn back on top of your deck. It's a really old card. Its wording is really weird and stupid, and it's a ruling fucking nightmare. But it is a very strong card, and especially in Commander where you have forty life, you can just pay life into the super aggressively and draw a ton of cards. It's still worse than cards like Necropotence, but it's really strong. Bop. This is the best one mana mana dork in green because it's the one that gets you the most colors of mana. So play it more. Reclamation stage. Low A tier. People overplay this card. This isn't better than Return to Nature most of the time. You have, just like Eternal Witness, you have to actually be doing stuff with it for this card to be good. Most decks can't do stuff with this. If you aren't blinking this or reanimating this, it's not worth running over other cards. Beast Within, S tier. Barely S tier, because I, I dislike these Destroy Target permanents that are three mana and stuff like generous gifts i also was kind of sleeping on but in green you have very little actual direct creature removal fighting can be finicky being able to just pay three mana and just fucking get rid of something is super good and it isn't speed this is definitely worth running in most green decks a second copy of kodama's reach so secure tribe elder is a another rampant growth effect so some of these are these all repeats Yes, these are all repeats. Uh, I must have messed up making the list, but that's everything. So no F tier cards this time. I thought all of the cards were at least playable. Something that really stuck me out when I watched this is that there really aren't that many green cards, unlike pretty much every other uh, color. There are no green cards that I think are like just shit, basically. And there are no green cards that I think are fucking amazing. There are tons of green cards that I think are very, very, very good. So, like green, I think is the best support color in Commander. I, I think. I think. I think mono green decks are generally not very good, but green blue or green black or green red or green white decks are much better than mono color any of those colors. I think like mono color blue is like, significantly worse than mono than like green blue is. The extra mana ramp that's safer is really helpful and its draw effects are a bit lacking but they're still pretty good the problem is that green doesn't really have that many ways of like actually ending a game that can't be interacted with really easily crater hoof behemoth can win games but you have to have a board for it to actually work pretty much all of green's uh effects are like that so green really struggles to compete uh, on its own at the highest levels of play like CVH levels but anything below that green is really hard to deal with because if you can't go over the top of all its big dumb creatures it has it's, it's, it's gonna generate it's the best at generating resources because even though these draw spells are less efficient than what blue has the fact that you're generating so much more mana means that they're honestly on par with them in your deck so green's ability to just grind out in the long game makes it really really good at beating people who don't want to play the game at a higher level so green's in a weird spot but it, it's probably the color that's the strongest in the most games even though at the highest levels i think it's probably not actually too good